If you decided to build your own gaming PC and you're not sure which motherboard to buy, but you've stumbled across my video, that means my awesome photography and sweet design skills have baited you in just like I wanted. Today, I'm gonna explain everything from motherboard features you could want to brands you might wanna watch out for. So strap in, get comfy, and listen up. Hey everyone, welcome to Danny's Tech Channel. I'm Danny, and today I'm gonna to tell you all about motherboards. If you're building your first computer and you've never done this before, buying the parts can be the most overwhelming thing. Putting the whole thing together really isn't that complicated, but finding the right components for your build at the right price can be overwhelming. So I'm gonna tell you all about motherboards, what you should be looking for, and the prices you should be paying. Now, the first thing I wanna to explain to you is not all motherboards are created equal. As you can see, I've got three different sizes right here. And these are the three main sizes you'll encounter when looking to do your computer build. These sizes are ATX, Micro ATX, and Mini ITX. They're sized like this because they're designed to fit different cases. So my recommendation to everybody when they're building a new computer is pick your case first. You might want a larger case that has really good airflow and can fit big components like a giant graphics card, like those new 4090s. Or you might want something small form factor that can be easily stored on a shelf or out of the way so it's off of your nice clean desk. ATX motherboards are the common standard when it comes to building a PC. Most cases are fit to this size. And you can see it's rather large, but it has plenty of space for all the components that you'll wanna use, whether it be your different front panel IO, your bottom panel stuff at like fan headers and whatnot, or maybe PCI slots for something like a capture card if you think about streaming, because you also need space for your GPU as well, if you're gonna be building a gaming PC. Micro ATX is the second size you'll encounter. This one's a little bit shorter than ATX. Usually they're the same width. However, the length of them is cut down. These are for micro ATX cases. You can put them in a full size case. I've done so before. It just looks a little funny because it doesn't extend all the way down and you kind of have that extra gap where all your cables will need to come up from the bottom of the case and plug into it. If you don't care about that, it's no big deal. But just remember, as the size goes down, you're gonna lose IO and connections for all of your different functions. The last size I wanna talk about is mini ITX. These things are really tiny and usually you sacrifice IO and ports and stuff on the motherboard because you want that small size. If you're gonna be building in a very small case and you need portability or you need storage and stuff like that, then ITX is your way to go because this is one of the only things that'll fit in those really tiny small form factor cases. That's why I said it's better to just pick your case first and then you can pick the motherboard based on which size case you want. The smaller the motherboard, the less room there is for certain components and features. Let me show you some of the features that I'm talking about. The first thing and the most important one now is the choice between DDR5 and DDR4. Motherboards determine whether or not you're gonna be using one or the other. It's not the CPU, although that does have something to do with it because the CPU has to be able to support that DDR5 or DDR4. All the new AM5 motherboards from AMD support DDR5 only. You can't use DDR4. When you're purchasing your motherboard, you'll look on the listing and it'll say whether it's DDR4 or DDR5 compatible. Intel's 12th and 13th gen CPUs can support DDR5 or DDR4. However, your motherboard is what dictates what you'll use in the system. So if you're gonna be buying a DDR4 motherboard with an Intel 12th or 13th gen CPU, you will need DDR4 RAM for that motherboard you can't upgrade it to DDR5 later. Just take note of that. If you buy a DDR5 board, you'll use DDR5 RAM immediately. Another feature you're gonna to wanna to look for is your PCI connectivity to the CPU and to the chipset. Uh, it really doesn't matter how it connects, honestly. Just know that when you're looking for your PCI lanes, they have PCI 3.0, 4.0, and now even 5.0 in some new AM5 motherboards. We're just getting into taking advantage of PCI 4.0 for graphics cards, so that doesn't really even matter. You can get a PCI Gen 3 board and use pretty much any graphics card with it, and you're gonna see the same performance. Unless you go with AMD's 6500 XT, but I don't recommend you go with that, so just forget it. Another feature you wanna look out for when picking out your motherboard is the fan header placement. A lot of people ignore this and don't really pay attention to it, 
fan headers are all over the motherboard. This Tomahawk that I have is a really good example of it, of a good fan header placement. But like I said, the bigger boards give you more features like this, like multiple fan headers. And the reason you wanna think about fan header placement is if your case is rather large, but the cables are not super long to be able to reach the fans to the headers, you might not be able to make it if you only have one or two headers on the motherboard. I really like having multiple fan headers for the fans that I choose in the case, rather than having to use fan splitters for everything. A fan splitter, all it does is you connect it to the fan header, it splits it off into two, three, sometimes four, to be able to feed your different fans. USB 3.0 and USB Type-C is the next thing I wanna talk about when it comes to features. Lots of cases nowadays are coming with USB-C connectors. A USB-C connector is an oval type of connector and you can plug it in either direction. The USB-A is that rectangular one and it can only be plugged in one way. If you don't have that connection on your motherboard, then that connection will go unused on your case because you can't plug it into something that you don't have a port for. Rear I.O. is one of the most important things when building your own PC. If you don't have enough USB connections, you're just wasting your time because you're going to have to buy a splitter or you're going to have to buy an adapter card to give you more. Just remember, the lower budget you go on the boards, the less I.O. you're going to have. You may have only four USB ports on a very budget style board. And then the high end boards like the new X670 boards, the X670Es from AMD, those things have a ton of I.O. I was looking at them online the other day. I saw one with like 16 different USB ports. A lot of motherboard manufacturers have switched to built-in I.O. shields now. They're actually bolted on to the back of the motherboard here. You can see it on this ASUS board that I've got. Actually, all of these boards have it built in. This is one of the nicest features that modern motherboards have added. I really love it. And I don't buy motherboards anymore that don't have built-in I.O. shields. I wanna talk about price of the motherboards because price is very important and it's easy to overspend when purchasing your motherboard. Now, when you're shopping for your motherboard, you'll not only need to pick the size of the board, you'll need to pick whether you wanna go with AMD or Intel. They're the two CPU manufacturers, and if you need help deciding whether you should go with AMD or Intel, I did a video already on all of this, and I'll leave it right up here for you to check out after this video, of course. Motherboards have been getting very expensive lately. AMD's Zen 4 and Intel's 13th gen CPUs are just astronomically high compared to what they have been in the past. I understand components are getting more expensive, manufacturing's gone up, but motherboards are just really, really expensive. In fact, AMD said that their budget series boards, the B series, were gonna be coming in at $125 starting price. They're all over $200 or $190 and above or something like that. That is very expensive compared to previous gens. If you wanna save yourself a lot of money, it's better to go with last generation's boards, like Intel 12th gen or AMD's Ryzen 5000 series. They're still great performance and they're even better priced because they wanna clear out all their old inventory to make room for the new stuff. So if you don't want the newest and greatest, you can still get awesome performance and save yourself a ton of money. The best way for you to determine if your CPU and your motherboard are compatible with each other is to swing over to PC Part Picker. I'll leave a link down below if you wanna go check it out. You'll go over to their website and click on PC Builder in the top left corner. Once you do that, it's gonna open up a menu of options to be able to pick and choose your CPU, your motherboard, the RAM, all that good stuff. One of the cool things about the website is once you click the CPU and decide which one you wanna buy, then you just click on choose a motherboard and it's only gonna give you the options for the motherboards that are compatible with your CPU. At least that's what it did last time I used it. So if you're new to PC building, this is a very easy option to be able to figure out what you should pick with what. Last thing I wanna give you is some information about motherboard brands, which ones I like and which ones you might wanna stay away from. I listed these by order of preference and it's really my preference, so if you don't like it, tough. The best motherboard manufacturer in my eyes is ASUS. I've used these numerous times now, like this ASUS Strix board. Their material quality is top notch. They have a great BIOS with excellent support and they have awesome build designs. The second company I really like is MSI. As you can see, every motherboard box I've got here is MSI. I've never had problems with them either. In fact, I go for MSI more frequently than I go for ASUS just because the price is so good and then the features that you get for that price is really, really good. So if you're looking to build your first PC, MSI is the best choice for beginners 
as well as for the amount of features that you get on them. The third company is Gigabyte. Gigabyte kind of drops down on the tier list for me because I hate their BIOS and they really haven't changed it a whole lot. They've tried tweaking things, but at the core, it's still the same. They don't give you many features and it's just really difficult for me to navigate. I, I don't enjoy it at all. The build quality of the boards is still fine. I haven't really heard anything or experienced anything with the Gigabyte boards I've had. It just depends on what you want out of the board. For me, BIOS support is a big deal. So MSI beat Gigabyte in that aspect. And then fourth in the listing, this is just my top four, is ASRock. ASRock boards have a little bit of quality concerns. I personally have never had any problems with it and I built quite a few with ASRock back in the day because they are very budget oriented. You can get ASRock boards for pretty much the cheapest price out of these other three boards. I'm not saying the motherboards are bad, they're just my last choice when it comes to the four major manufacturers. So ASUS takes the top, they are high on price, MSI is right in the middle with quality and price, and then Gigabyte comes down a little bit because their BIOS is not that great, and ASRock, Sorry, Azrock. Just a little bit of recap on this. If you skip to the end to find out my final thoughts on this whole thing, good for you. This is the TLDR, just in case you were wondering. Picking a motherboard is not very hard, especially if you use things like PC Part Picker, where it pretty much breaks it down and shows you what's compatible and what's not. You'll wanna find the case that you want first, then pick a motherboard that's fit to that case. If you pick an ATX case, go with an ATX motherboard. Mini ITX case, pick your mini ITX motherboard. It's as simple as that. Then you'll wanna decide whether you're gonna go with AMD or Intel. It's not a hard choice. They both have really good performance these days and it's pretty much the same thing. You just have to decide if you're team red or team blue. Then you'll choose the brand whose design and style fits your build. If you wanna go with a white build, choose a white motherboard. That way it has a cool aesthetic to it. If you want a bunch of lights and RGB connections, try to find the brand that goes with that. ASUS is really well known for their lights and colors. Then all you have to do is swing over to Amazon or Newegg and throw all that stuff in your cart and you're ready to build. Now, if you want some recommendations for good motherboards at good prices, I'll leave links below that you can go check out and purchase them for yourself. Now, they're affiliate links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra and it helps out the channel. So why wouldn't you do it? Go do it. If you're new to building PCs, I hope my motherboard video helped you out when looking to shop for your next motherboard and it didn't confuse you too much along the way. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel and I'll see you in the next one.